Hey everybody, you're watching Lunch Bites by Burleson Technology Group, BTG. And um, Lunch Bites are quick and simple nuggets to feed your appetite for knowledge. They're always 15 minutes or less, and they're designed to bring you essential information about topics at the intersection of business and technology. They're a fun-filled way to cap off your lunch hour, so hopefully you have your cup of coffee. Let's begin. Today's Lunch Bite is one of a series that we're putting together uh, around the topic of developing websites using IBM Workplace Web Content Management, or WCM. And the topic today um, is about WCM libraries and what the role and the capabilities of WCM libraries are. Think of a WCM library as a, a sort of logical partition. I say logical because it's not necessarily a physical partition uh, on a hard drive or something like that. It's just a logical collection of uh, content and components. Um, so, you know, sites, site areas, taxonomy components, um, workflow, library components like HTML components, all of these objects that you're used to uh, in WCM, they can be sort of collected together into a logical partition and given a name. Once you have uh, one or many, uh, more than one different library, um, you can manage that library independently of other libraries. Uh, so for example, you can, you can have uh, different, different syndication flow of one particular library than you might have of another library. Or you can set the role-based access of the library itself or the items in the library uh, differently than you do in another library. Um, they give you uh, a level of a new level of management control over your content and items in WCM. So let's take a look for a second. I want to just give you a lay of the land uh, in terms of the WebSphere portal user interface uh, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about the uh, more specifically some of the capabilities of um, libraries in WCM. Those users that have um, administrative access can click on this administration link and inside of that they can go under this portal content area and click on web content libraries and here's um, where you can see that I can click a button to create a new library um, and I can as you can see I kinda have some of my own libraries in there when you click to create a new library um, you basically um, give the library a name uh, and a description. Uh, you can define a particular language for that library. You can say whether a library can be deleted or not and you can toggle whether a library is enabled or not. We'll talk about those things a little, a little bit more detail in a second. I want to show you some of the icons over here. Um, edit library takes you right back to that view where I can change the name or change the description. I can set permissions on the library as a whole or I can um, go into the library and set permissions specifically in the library for various things like authoring templates, presentation templates, etc. I can label a library. Labeling a library applies the label to the latest versions of all the items in the library at that time. Why would I want to do that? Well, that way, later, I can come in and I can restore the library by that label. So think of a label as a way of tagging um, a snapshot in time of a particular library and then now I can restore uh, by that tag. You can also restore a library by a snapshot in time uh, by date. We'll cover syndication and libraries in more depth in another lunch bite so I'm just going to skim over the surface right now. Let's take a look at this graphic. Um, Imagine that you have a server environment called UAT for user acceptance testing. And then you have a production environment you call the marketing portal. Now, in this kind of setup, you might want to create in your repository two different libraries, a content library and a design library. And let's say that in the design library, you put your, your HTML components, your authoring templates, your presentation templates, the kinds of things that really only your developers work on or your, uh, your power user um, authors are allowed to work on and change. Uh, but the content library contains all the content items, the things that are created and published and edited on a daily basis. So 
by setting these up different, we can say that, okay, I want content to go straight into the production environment. Uh, as soon as it's uh, approved in its workflow and it becomes a live item, it can go syndicated either manually or automatically to the, uh, the production environment. Um, but let's say that you have a policy set up where you say, we're going to UAT test any new sites and, and content assemblies in those sites uh, and make sure they're okay before they get allowed to go, go live to production. So you could set the design library to go straight into the UAT environment where it can be tested uh, safely and then when it's okay to do that well they can kick off a manual syndication of that library into the production environment. So you can see how libraries give you um, some control over what gets syndicated uh, and where these things go in the syndicated flow. Another area of control that you have on libraries is uh, security or role-based access. So what I showed you before is that you can set a certain uh, access to the library as a whole and then you can go down into the library and you can set access uh, for the various items in the library. Um, this graphic right here kind of just shows you a quick depiction of that. Uh, if you imagine that you've set up a marketing library, a branding library, and an HR library, for example, uh, you might also have um, groups, user groups that are that are representative of that. Marketing users, branding users, and HR users. Well, you can set up the library so that the marketing users, they can read from the branding library, but they can only edit and change and create things in their own marketing library. So you can set up, um, you know, various different access to these libraries. And, and, and how that can help also is that when the branding users come in, they see only the things in the authoring portlet that are relevant to them in their role. Same thing for the marketing users. Another thing that um, you can do is um, get some extra benefits around version management in the library. Um, you can restore a set of items within a library that either have the same label I showed you that in the user interface, or you can restore items that were versioned at or before a specific date and time. So with a library, I can go in and say, at this point in time, I want to tag all the latest versions of everything in this library. And then that way, I can restore this library from that tag. Um, in a similar way, you can restore uh, everything by date. You can say, get me all the recent, ver all the latest versions in the version history of all the items of everything um, prior to the specified date and time. Exporting and importing. Um, you can also export libraries um, to a physical hard drive. Uh, and you can then import them. Now this is not something I, you can do easily through the, the user interface of WebSphere Portal. You have to do this through command line operations, so it's typically uh, a WebSphere Portal administrator task, um, but you can, uh, you can do that, and there's some limitations to that. Um, you can also disable content in a library uh, and components, disable content and components in a library. The way this works is basically um, you can basically freeze the library. Think about that. You can say this library is now disabled. Nobody can access it through the authoring portlet to edit items, create items, change items, or delete items. However, if any of the items in that library are referenced from content, um, they're still going to be able to be rendered to the end users of the portal. Um, there's some features um, for developers in the Java API. Um, basically, you can use the API to create a library, delete a library, copy one, import one, or export one. Uh, so if you want to learn more about that, just look in the Java doc API documentation. Uh, anyway, we, we do all kinds of stuff. We've been working with WebSphere Portal and WCM for a long time. Uh, we can help you with information architecture, personalization, security, and uh, in the full life cycle from strategy, design, development, implementation, training, and support. So check us out at BurlesonTech.com. And if you need some help, give us a call. Thanks.